Okay, so uh, in addition to uh, getting some flavor on my uh, car and on the body itself, I figure I probably also want to get a little bit of gravy on my wheels. So I'm going to drip some down there. And uh, since these are now my drift missile wheels because the chrome was peeling off of the, the rim on the inside, I guess, whenever I got them, um, these will now just be... Uh, my extra wheels that I drift in and um, eventually I'll get another set that I'll make um, be my like my show wheels I guess but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and sticker them on there a little bit um, I went ahead and cut off one of these stickers already that I'm about to put on there if I can get it to come free all right, so I peeled off this tiny little guy and I cut it as close as I could basically around the lettering so I didn't have a bunch of clear crap sticking off. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that down there on the uh, lip. Um, I'm going to make sure that my wheel is facing the appropriate direction with the lettering in the right way so that that way it's at the bottom because I want the wheel to be centered up whenever I put the sticker on there so that way... If I take a photo, you can see the sticker, but you also see the type of the rim with the name on it. Okay, so I've got the sticker down in there, and now what I'm going to do is I've got this uh, little tool here that I use to press down the tent and um, window banners and stuff like that. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got smoothed all down with no bubbles in it. All right, so I think that's uh, now on there. It looks good. Pretty cool. Just adds, like I said, a little bit of flair. Okay, so on the bottom of the rim right there where the chrome was peeling off, um, it was actually showing the white kind of plastic color underneath from the, the rim itself. So what I did was I went ahead and hit the lip right there with the... Uh, the silver paint pen and then that way it looks like where the chrome is scratching off it's still silver metallic underneath and um, kind of takes away that plasticky look and feel that originally was popping out there so um, I think that looks a little bit better all right so while I've got the rims off and I was doing the uh, sticker on the the other back one there I decided I might as well go ahead and install my little lug spikes I'm going to go ahead and also just change the offset slightly on the fronts. I'm going to just go down one step uh, from where they were and um, just give it a tad bit wider stance up front. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get these lug spikes installed. And then that way I can have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more style on my wheels. A little bit of purple bling bling. All right. So I'm working on the last one. I've got these uh, tiny little lug spikes that I'm putting down in there. And um, yeah, this is uh, pretty cool. I like that they already have these made. I custom made a set uh, before I knew that they actually had these. So when I found these, I uh, ordered um, two packages in purple, two packages in gold for some various rims. Because eventually I'll get some black rims as well and I'll want gold spikes on those. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just uh, putting in the last set right now, and uh, then I should have all four wheels back together with lug spikes. Alright, so while my uh, wheel lugs are drying, I thought real quick I would go ahead and um, give a little bit closer look at my lights and the buckets, because I realized I never really did a recap of those after I did the yellow lenses, so... Um, I do need to fill you in on that. Um, I don't know why, but it feels necessary because uh, it feels incomplete. So anyway, uh, I went ahead and you probably saw before on these light buckets, they were really hard to see through because I had like excessive scratches on the light bucket, um, especially towards the inside here and right in here. Um, I scratched them up a little too much when I was kind of doing some some scratches and some damage detail stuff. And then also I was, you know, had to scrape off just the inside layer right there of some paint that went over the line that um, was too much, you know, for the bucket. So 
Um, but I think it looks pretty cool in there. That yellow is highly visible. But again, I wanted the um, actual light itself to be yellow, and I haven't even checked it yet. So I hope this is uh, yellow because um, we're, about, we're about to find out together. So uh, let's see. All right. So looks like mission accomplished. Let's see if I can zoom in there a little bit better so you can see it because it is kind of washing out. There we go. Yeah, so the bulb in there now is actually giving off a yellow light as well. In addition to just the surround that I painted being yellow. Because before it was super bright, like that one right there. So that little bit of um, transparent yellow, hopefully that holds up over time. I'm not sure um, how well it will, being that it's painted on there. Um, so we'll have to see. But it does definitely, you know, change the the look of the front light for sure let's kill some lights real quick and uh check this out so the red from the rears is pretty hella bright at the same time look at how much the headlights actually do and that's them through the back window but they actually give off a damn good amount of light and uh, light up the path pretty freaking well like it is pretty amazing to me like the the light kit is man one of the coolest little things you can add to an rc car i think it's just totally the bee's knees okay so i was looking around on the front here just kind of looking to see um, what else i needed to do and uh, up here on top of the turbo it's got that little, uh, there it is, that little part right there. And I kind of wish I would have noticed that before I mounted it. Because I would have taken a tiny, small little drill bit and drilled into that. So I'm still going to do that right now. Um, I could probably take it off of the hood beforehand. But um, it's mounted on there pretty well. So I think I could still drill in through it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a little hole in that. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, since I've already got one pipe that comes and runs out this way, I'm actually going to drill a tiny little hole right there in the black opening that's in that gap. And then I'm going to run just a tiny little piece of wire that goes up and out. I kind of wish I had like some small braided line, but I don't really have anything that fancy. So I'm just going to use some small, um, some small, small uh, um, piece of uh, solder actually. Because the solder is so easy to bend that I can easily bend it into any shape that I want. And um, if I wanted to get fancy, I could even spiral it and then drop it into the hood. Which I very well might do just for, you know, shits and giggles and, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, a little bit flair. So, let me see. Okay, so working on adding a little bit of uh, some bling to my turbo and uh, just really trying to put an accessory line on it to kind of make it... Uh, look a little bit more realistic. So um, I originally I had the idea I was going to make a coiled line. So I made this little guy uh, out of solder. Um, and thought about putting that in there. Because basically, let me just mock it in there real quick. Uh, basically, if I drop it in there like I had intended, it would basically look like that. Okay. So I got the little coming out of that hole that I drilled and then going into another hole in there. And uh, I thought that might look kind of cool because of the gold or whatnot. Okay, and then that's the alternative, which is just basically a red wire uh, sticking in there. It's uh, much bigger, so it fits in that section actually a lot better. Um, so maybe I'll just go this route, plus it's probably going to be the more... A realistic option so uh, I think I'm gonna do that I'm trying to get this finished off now um, I have got my uh, wing here and a buttload of tiny itty bitty little black screws I'm trying to get the wing mounted on there now and uh, also went ahead and picked up some of this black mesh tape um, I figured that might be an easy solution to go ahead and put across the front right there so that way I can go ahead and get some mesh on there and then I also picked up a uh, an electronic switch. Hopefully I can get this plugged in um, between my lights and then have them actually connected to my 
receiver. Um, I have no idea how that works, so I'm going to see if I can figure that out and um, <clears throat> try and get that all connected up um, because I would really like to get this body on my uh, chassis instead of using my nitro bodies, and um, that way I can have a, a little drift action with my S15. Okay, so what I'm doing, and you can see the dots right there across the front, uh, but basically I measured the distance across. Um, I went ahead and found the center point. I marked out that center point, and then basically I went ahead and measured over and then did a dot every 10 uh, millimeters towards the end. And now basically I'm doing the same thing on the back side. I've got several dots already laid out. And then as I make a mark right there with a dot, I'm just moving it right down to the next, and then that way I can see exactly that millimeter, I'm sorry, the uh, 10 millimeter distance there. And I could go ahead and make a dot right there to mark that. Come on, paint marker. Don't be a dick. Okay, so I make that little dot, and then I've got, you know, that fresh one, and then I just move it down. Um, and basically, I'm going to get it right to the edge there so I'm gonna do it looks like uh, about two more because um, I don't want to do all the way to the very edge some of the wing does hang over onto the trunk um, so basically I went right up to the edge right where that curve is so that's where that next one will end or two more and then it'll end there okay so uh, I'm back <laughs> and uh, I'm kind of ashamed to admit this <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with a screwdriver that I'm using and the size of these tiny ass little screws and me trying to do it here on the table, um, putting in this uh, amount of screws across the back and then also uh, this amount across the front um, took me about an hour and a half. <laughs> so... It's way overkill. I didn't need to have so many screws on there, um, but I'm trying to uh, make it a, look a little bit more realistic. So, um, you know, I figured that uh, about every 10 centimeters would be a good spacing. Uh, next time, I will definitely um, probably double that. Um, I'm hoping that this looks all right once it's on there because there's not really a whole lot of going back from it now. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll see, I've got them in there just enough to be through the first layer. So that way now I can go ahead and tape it down should work. So I'm hoping that that will, because these screws are so tiny. I actually had to stick, uh, magnets around the outside of my, um, screwdriver. Cause like I said, it took me an hour and a half and for a while they kept flying off and I had to find them on the table or on this mat when they shot around to one of these corners. So I put a magnet on there so that way every time it would shoot off, it would instantly stick to the magnets. Anyway, it was a real pain. Okay, so I have it taped on there pretty well. I've got the first uh, outside to basically peeled back so I could see the edge and kind of line it up to make sure that it was, you know, pretty much right, left and left and right on the bumper. I can go ahead and move that back up there and make sure that corner is locked in place and then that way I can get the very center one in there I can get the outside ones in there and it won't move at all and then same thing down here at the back side on the bottom I can knock that center one in and then do the couple outer ones right there and then uh, should be able to take the tape off do all the rest and um, should be good. So uh, that is my plan and uh, then my duck bill will finally be mounted Okay, so I went ahead and got all the exposed screws locked down So now I am going to go ahead and remove off the tape and uh, go ahead and nail down the rest and it should be good And I hope it's straight <laughs> Okay, so I finished uh, putting all the screws in all the way, and uh, it is now locked down officially in place for sure, for sure, ain't coming off, going nowhere. Um, I can pick it up by the wings, so um, that's pretty good. Um, oh, also I darkened up right above the exhaust where, uh, you know, it would be a little 
rich sides. So, um, I think with the wing on there, uh, I need to go ahead and move on to putting the screen mesh in here. So let's do that. Okay. So for the, um, mesh, I decided to try something that I've never used before and I didn't know how this would work out. Um, but what I did was I actually found this mesh tape and um, I assume that it's just an adhesive backed mesh, but gee, it's really on there. Oh man, okay. So it's mesh and it is adhesive backed, but the adhesive is all up in the mesh. Okay, so then what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to cut two pieces of this and lay the sticky side on top of each other. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut the side that's facing up a little bit smaller. So that way the sticky side on the outside is the border. And uh, that way I can still go ahead and stick that to my shell from the inside right there. Um, I might have to move those. I'm going to have to move the magnets that I've got in there. Uh, so that way I can stick that down first and then the magnets on top. So, um, yeah, I, I think this might work for this, at least for now. Um, I didn't realize it was going to be full adhesive all the way across. I thought just the screen would have, like, adhesive on it for some reason. And when you stuck it on, it would still let air flow through. But this one doesn't look like it'll do that. So um, let me see how this works, and I'll be back with what I do for the cutout and piece together of the adhesive to make it non-adhesive but still stick. Yeah, confusing. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, what I did was um, I went ahead and cut out two pieces actually. One that's a little bit longer. This is going to be the piece that is going to be basically the one that sticks to the body. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm gonna cut it just a little bit smaller, basically just to fit the opening right there. So that way a non-sticky side is facing up in that grill and it won't collect a bunch of crap. Um, so I'm gonna stick this sticky side to this sticky side to block out all the stickiness on this one. And then the only sticky part facing up that will be exposed will be the border that goes around the outside edge to stick it in place, I think. Let's try it. All right, so let's measure the distance across that. This is a 73 millimeter opening across, and then we're going to say that the total mesh that needs to be across there and non-sticky needs to cover that opening. So I'm gonna call that 37, we'll call it 40. 40 by 75, that's what we'll do. All right, the piece that I cut off is roughly about uh, 82, 83 across. So I'm gonna trim that down just a little bit um, to 75 and then I'm gonna trim it across so it's only 40. And then once I peel that off and stick it to this one, I should have a double-sided uh, mesh that will go on there. And then also kind of looking at it just the way that it is, you know, it's kind of a thin mesh. So um, actually doubled up, it does look much better because it's got a little bit more of a uh, you know, smaller feel depending on how you place the mesh. So I can stagger it and get a little bit more of a like hard to see through feel or I can, you know, like line it up towards right on top of each other, make it look a little thicker. Um, so I'm going to probably not pay any attention to that at all when I stick them together and end up with however it ends up but um, just uh, you know thought I would show that <laughs> okay so I went ahead and cut that piece with the little smaller dimensions and you can see it actually laid underneath there I took and stuck the two sticky sides together so now this side out here is actually not sticky and uh, the sticky side is what I'm using the border like I said, that I cut it smaller. Uh, the border around here is what's sticking it actually to the car. Um, it is incredibly sticky stuff. I cut a small hole out here for the turbo um, 
basically hot pipe that I created to make it look a little bit better so the turbo wasn't just all naked and melting into nothing up top. So um, when I flip it over now, I've got this nice mesh in there that's actually got like a nice substantial look to it and looks like an actual like mesh um, that you would see in a in a grill like that because it is a little bit more of the wire overlaid look which I think looks pretty cool in there to be honest um, I wasn't 100% certain that I would like it but I do think that that looks pretty nice and it was definitely a lot easier than trying to cut small little strips of um, screen and then have to like hot glue them in place or whatever and uh, I just cut out that little hole so the you know the pipe still goes down on under there um, so that looks pretty good I think so all in all I am uh, pretty satisfied with that to be honest um, and again it was just this uh, you know black screen tape um, I got it on Amazon and uh, very inexpensive it was like five bucks for this roll and it is uh, I believe two inches by like I can't remember how many feet it was, like 20 something feet or something, I don't remember. I didn't even really look at that. I just made sure it was wide enough to be able to cover what I needed and um, it has done a great job. I think it would probably also look pretty good up front, you know, to like cover in an opening if you didn't have an intercooler or maybe even for some people they want to kind of hide it behind mesh. Um, it would probably look pretty good up there for that opening too. And again, if you kind of just do what I did where you cut two pieces and you stick the sticky sides together um, you know with the opening that you need and then a little bit of extra around the outside that's still sticky to kind of put it in place or you know you can do two sticky sides together and then just put it on there and hot glue it down uh, whatever your preference but I definitely think that that looks a lot better I am super stoked on that so I'll be using that tape going forward it looks like for um, for my other bodies because I like it so I'm going to put a little piece right here now across the front and uh, then that should finish out the mesh detail that I needed. Okay, the front uh, mesh grill piece is in. I'm just going to go ahead and um, lock it in place with a little bit of hot glue because that strip is pretty thin. And then um, I need to take the little piece of Lexan down here and uh, actually lock it to the body with some of the uh, little body screws I've got and take some of that tape off and then uh, I think the front will be in pretty good shape all right so I have uh, went ahead and fixed this front uh, kind of beat up piece of Lexan on there that I've got um, I'm trying to just kind of fix a couple of different pieces on there to make it look like it was a uh, you know like track side repair after it broke off um, so I've got a couple other pieces here that I have cut uh, small pieces that basically will fit here and then here and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go kind of um, give them a little bit of uh, color I'm actually going to hit them with the primer um, I'm going to do that and then probably do just a little bit of you know like dirtying up to them around the edges and whatnot um, so that way it kind of matches the rest of the front end with that um, little bit of splatter and whatnot okay so in addition to um, creating a piece up here to cover this front. I'm going to go ahead and try and also create um, some side pieces to cover up some of this damage and see if I can't make like a little piece that I can uh, bolt on right here to cover up some of that opening and then a couple more across here and again I'll just do them in primer I'm just using uh, basically spare pieces of Lexan like this is just the leftover that I cut off of my uh, duckbill wing um, but basically I'm gonna try and use those and uh, see I've also got this one here so um, just using spare parts spare pieces to see if I can maybe uh, you know figure something out so um, see what I can do okay got several small pieces of uh, Lexan here cut that are kinda gonna be a little bit on the perfect side so it's a little odd to be honest um, but I'm totally cool with it so uh, typically this is how I do it I've got a little makeshift paint booth that I that I built right here um, it's just cardboard taped together um, but it also doubles as my 
shock tower stand. I use that to fill and put my shocks in, but um, just flip that over, throw my parts in there with some tape so they don't blow around, and I am ready to primer them up. All right, so I went ahead and got these primered and then uh, just did a little bit of dirty splatter on them. Uh, the one that's going to be furthest up front, I did a little bit darker than the rest. Um, just because it's kind of going to be right there in the front corner and uh, it should be a little bit darker probably. Um, picking up some extra debris uh, being out front. So um, I've got the uh, replacement pieces on here though and I'm about to put them on there and see what I can fix about some kind of semblance of a side skirt to this because uh yeah my uh my dog ate those pieces so um let's uh see what I can come up with okay so I've got the uh, front pieces fixed on there I've got several little screws in it and um now I just need to um kind of I fix them from the back. This one's actually supposed to stay behind that one, but it, it's popping out because it's such a close, close, such a close fit. So I'm gonna actually um, from behind just put a drop of uh, hot glue on that to hold it, so that that way they don't come undone. And then uh, moving on down the side, I have fashioned up here what's gonna be a portion of a side skirt. So I'm about to uh, flip that over and. Um, make sure that I can keep it secured in place. So uh, my s down here on this very end to kind of get it to shape up with this, I just squeeze down on it and pinch this spot right here to kind of make a crease. Um, and in doing so, it kind of fits around that little piece perfectly. I put some tape to hold it, uh, but I'm gonna flip it over and put a piece of glue, hot glue on the back just to make sure that it holds it nice and tight um, while I'm going to put uh, screws in it but uh, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, that one on there, and then I've got to put one behind it as well. So I'm going to um, test fit that one up next and get it in place. And then what I'll probably do is uh, start by screwing in the top one and then go to the side. So as I've been getting the uh, sides together here, I've been kind of taking some of these other little pieces that I've got that are um, basically scraps and cutting off chunks. So... Uh, like this piece here, I just cut off basically, um, it's in this shape to kind of fill in that spot and then um, I took and bent the corner of it down so that way whenever I screw the top edge down, this bottom piece will press up against this little side skirt that I made um, and then that way it'll kind of look like it's fashioned together out of several different pieces, you know, of um, basically... Uh, just some scraps so I'm um, trying to get that complete and then the side should be done all right so after what seemed like uh, forever I uh, got the sides kind of crafted out of some spare pieces uh, painted detailed screwed down dirtied up um, and uh, yeah, that actually kind of contours around there. I was able to bend them and I actually cut uh, the two pieces right there so that way it splits where the door would open. And uh, it's not just one continuous piece. And um, yeah, so now I've got a uh, makeshift side skirt to fill in the spot where my dog ate that section. And uh, I've got a section up here that uh, both, um, you know, look... Uh, Pretty cool, collectively, um, together side by side, is patched up pieces of the body. So, uh, I uh, think my patchwork is complete. Alright, well, I think I have uh, put the finishing touches on the drift missile. I went ahead and uh, created this little section up front here with these pieces. Um, I went ahead and put some screws in along the way throughout here, 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 you know, all that stuff. Um, as we move to the side here, I have uh, done the same thing along here to kind of fill in the broken space. I kind of created my own little side skirt patch. And uh, so now that side that was super broken out actually looks pretty dope with the little patchwork stuff I think um, looks pretty cool like that 
and is a lot more complete than it was originally. This is the completed drift missile in uh, a very different looking state than it was originally. Uh, very different looking than it was when I thought I was done. And then very different looking still from where I thought I was going to take it as a drift car um, when I first called it the drift missile to what it actually looks like now. And I am really happy with these results. So uh, thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you've watched the whole series from beginning to end, that's even better. I really, really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think of it. And I will be bringing you some videos uh, shortly of it uh, at the track and sideways. So, cheers everybody. Thanks.